Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Just say yes into the chat if you can hear us, please. Yes, we can. Hello, Rahul oh, wow. and Mandeep and Taurun. And oh my God, there's lots of people in here. My name is Jay and I'm with Mark. Hi, everybody. And Mark is, well, he has a funny accent as uh, far as I'm concerned. I sound a little different. <laughs> Mark is Canadian. Mark is also an ex IELTS speaking and writing examiner. Yes, correct? both. Yeah. How long uh, did you do that for? Did that for about five years and have been teaching uh and doing informal speaking and writing tests for about another five years all right fantastic yeah. so we've got a real professional here with us today and what we're going to do is give you feedback on your speaking part two in fact this presentation or this lesson that we're going to do is focusing on part two of ielts speaking the reason is we think part two is probably the most challenging it's a bit odd isn't it part two well, yeah, I mean, in some ways, it should be very simple, it should be very natural. But in some ways, I think it's where a lot of people get the most nervous. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully today we can help relax you a little bit and give you a couple of little tips to make it a nice, easy experience Good. in your test. I agree. I agree. All right. So let me just share the screen here and we'll get started uh cool so ielts speaking what we're going to do specifically is we're going to do a very brief overview of ielts speaking just in case you don't know what happens most of you already do as i mentioned we're going to do part two and we're going to do an open mic that is we want four participants and we're going to give you feedback on your performance okay and then we'll do a little q a at the end just in case you have any questions about what the test is about or methods or where to practice etc so that's the plan so just briefly an overview of ielts speaking the whole thing goes for 11 to 14 minutes and I have to say on test day, it feels like it goes for about one minute because time <laughs> flies. There are three parts in IELTS speaking. Uh, there is the small talk part where you talk about yourself and you talk about where you live and whether you're a student. Anything else there? Four or five sentences. Keep it simple. Yeah. You know, don't don't overthink it. Yeah, I agree. Don't overthink it. Yep. Good one. Part two is where things get a little bit tricky. That's where you have to do the two minute monologue. That is, you have to speak by yourself for two minutes. It's not really interactive at all. And it's kind of strange. And that's what we're going to practice today. Part three, what happens in part three? Part three will extend on part two. So whatever the topic was in part two, there will be similar questions based on that in part three. A uh, little tip to sometimes, you know, my students say, you know, I took the test and the questions were a bit harder in part three. Mm. That's a good thing. Yeah. They were trying to push you to see how far you could go. Just, I have a question. In part three, yeah. the examiner can sort of change questions depending on the proficiency of the student. Is that right? Yes. If they're thinking, oh, okay, this might be a higher score, they uh -huh. might cut to the more challenging questions. Right. And right. Uh, not super, super challenging, but they might not ask those simple identification questions you know what are some things people like to do in you know so they they tend to be a bit more opinion based but okay yeah good one good i like part three seems to be straightforward yeah. all right so of course you need to know about scoring so how are you scored in ielts speaking well first of all you're scored in four criteria it's actually really more than four because fluency and coherence vocabulary range and accuracy, grammatical range and accuracy and pronunciation. Each of these is worth 25%. So there's equal distribution of the scoring there. But what does it all mean? So let's take a closer look. And Mark, if you can talk us through how the examiners actually score mm. the candidates. All right, so these notes here are based on the band descriptors that the examiners get, but also just some observations that we've had as teachers about where students can get a bit mixed up. Uh, and we'll start with fluency and coherence. I actually think this is the most important place that you can focus. You know, in a, in a couple of 
days or weeks, you can, you know, get a bit more fluent. You can learn how to extend ideas mm -hmm. uh, really quickly. The first thing we have here is being is, is thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And this is really important. Um, what can happen a lot of times in the exam is that candidates are just trying to give the what they think is the right answer. Oh, good one. Yeah. Right. And it's it, there's no right answer. There's just your thoughts and your reflections and you express them. Yeah, can I just jump in there? So yeah. people, there's really no memorizing of anything here. No. This, and you really can't memorize because you have no idea what the examiner is going to ask you, apart from those first questions, whether you're a student or whether you work. But really, there should be nothing memorized here. And as Mark said, being thoughtful means you're really giving a considered response to what the examiner is asking you. You're not thinking about you know, what the preparation said and what this yeah. person said and what my friend said. No, just respond appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. You're right about, you know, don't try to memorize anything. I don't think I've ever really seen that go well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's the main thing. Like, even if you're not sure you have a good answer, that's fine. Yeah. And I mean, even if they said, look, I don't really know, but maybe, and then express an idea. I think that's more important than getting scared and, and or nervous and being like, uh, the answer is this. Okay. So, yeah. What about development and connections? What does this mean? Extend the ideas, extend, extend, extend. Whatever you say, you know, why is that important? Yeah. Or why is that good? Yeah. Why is that bad? Um, you know, don't just give a short, quick answer, but then try to develop, you know, well, I know some people think this, I think this, right. and in the end, this happened. Mm -hmm. So bring in more information that is connected, mm -hmm. and that comes to the next one, well connected. Right. So, you know, as a result, what happened? Or, um, you know, in the future, you might, you know, people should do what? Mm. Find some way to kind of connect the ideas and keep going mm. forward. Nice. Yeah. Good one. All right. Let's talk about vocabulary quickly. Mm. Um, so there seems to be several parts to vocabulary. Vocabulary is quite complex. First thing is you need to be precise with your word choice, right? Mm. You don't want to just use these crazy big words because they're crazy big words, right? <laughs> you want to use not crazy big words. You want to use words that are appropriate and meaningful for the particular thing that you're talking about. Yeah. Right? And I mean, when it comes to expanding vocabulary, reading more is such an important part of that. That's going to help give you the vocabulary that's precise. Generally on test day, I would recommend staying close to those words that you are comfortable with. Good one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Okay. Then there's, uh, relevance that would be relevance to the topic itself so there's going to be specific vocabulary let's say you have to talk about a teacher that you whom you really respect so there'll be vocabulary related to teachers and education and classes and stuff like that mm -hmm. varied means that you're not just repeating the same word again and again do try to think of synonyms or other ways to describe something you don't want to be repetitious what does natural mean Again, I think that comes down to, you know, precise, but not forced. You're not trying to replace a word suddenly um, because you want to, you know, try to boost your score unnaturally. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if like, let's say a more advanced word like pedagogy, if you're not sure what it is and you say something more like teaching style, right, then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also collocation. So fr natural phrases. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's not just, you know, new fancy words. It could be like educational background, right? Those are two nice, not yeah. two difficult words, yeah. but together they mean something specific. Great. All right. Hold on. I just have to click something here. Whoops. Good old Zoom. It makes it hard to click stuff. And it looks like I can't make myself bigger i can perhaps expand myself oh there we is go that, is that working that oh works. my god i'm bigger <laughs> wonders of technology yeah. okay let's not get carried away of the tech grammar just quickly grammar of course needs to be accurate that is when you're using a plural noun like uh glass or glasses or computers plurality verb tenses the right preposition of course you want to try to do this on test day but also be conscious of 
varying your grammar to a degree if you can. You can't just speak in short, simple sentences. Sometimes throw in a question or throw in a, a conditional, like hmm, if sentences, for example, a modal verb should or could or might, just sort of try and vary it up a little bit. What about pronunciation? That's a, that's a hard one. That is a tricky one. Um, and, and I love how the first word here is clear. Yeah, I like that. And, and one key thing is, you know, it's not a race. Don't worry about speed. Keep it at a consistent pace. So that will also allow you to do more. Sometimes when I, or when I was an examiner, sometimes people come in and they try to talk really quickly and they think that this is the best way to go. Mm. And, and as you can see, you know, my pronunciation becomes very flat. And that leads into the next two points, which is stress, sentence stress and word stress. So if I slow down, I can now add stress to words. And this is important because the more I'm able to use word stress to express a specific meaning, mm. the higher the score I can get. Well said. <laughs> no, there's, there's something to say there also about mm. test day anxiety, I think, because it can be there's a lot of pressure on test day yeah. and one of the things people tend to do is speed up when they're anxious so if you're like that you really need to take a breath yeah catch yourself if you're going too fast slow down it's much better to be slower and clearer fluency is not really about speed so much it's about um, not hesitating not reaching for those words so slowing down will help you there and then finally, we have connected speech and pausing, which is a natural part of spoken language where we sort of blend words and phrases together. And pausing is also really important between ideas, et cetera, to create emphasis. All right, it's probably enough on scoring. There's a lot there though. There's mm. certainly something to think about. If you do need help with your pronunciation, uh, like your core pronunciation, just the sounds of English, maybe you're a bit uh, unclear in your speech, you can check out e2school.com. There's a uh, pronunciation course there you can sign up for free. It's a really good one. Okay, so let's get to it. Part two, two minute talk. Very brief overview. So on test day, the examiner is going to give you a task card on a piece of paper like this, right? The examiner is also going to give you a, a piece of paper and a pen so you can take notes. You're going to have one minute to prepare in the time where you can take notes. And we'll talk about that coming up very soon. And then you have two minutes or up to two minutes. You don't have to speak for two minutes. Would you encourage people to speak for the full two minutes? If they can, if absolutely. They can. Uh, have no fear. Don't, don't get stressed out if you run out of um, things to say. The examiner is most likely going to encourage you to keep going, uh -huh. but you know, if, if, if you're done, you're done. Yeah. Um, ideally you do want to try and it's, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. And what happens if the examiner stops you at two minutes? Is that bad? Nope. That is totally fine. Right. Yeah. yeah. They will just stop you mid sentence. Even if you haven't finished all your ideas, they've got enough information. And they just say, thank you. Yeah. That's it's, it. That's not a bad thing. Nope. That's not a bad thing. And sometimes after it directly after it, they might ask a couple, one or two, uh, follow up questions. Okay. Here's what a task card might look like, but I'm going to skip that because I want to examine the one that we're going to focus mm. on. Actually, no, because we're going to talk about method first. <laughs> okay. So, what's a method? Well, you can go into this exam sort of unprepared and you haven't thought through any strategies or approaches to how you're actually going to fill the two minutes. And I can tell you that methods are actually extremely helpful. They sort of provide you with a bit of a, a structure or just a way to approach the, this particular question type. And if you have practiced this, you will find it difficult to speak for two minutes. The usual method is like this, and let me shrink myself so you can see. Whoopsie, whoopsie, hold on. Okay, there we go. nice, there we go. Uh, do you want to talk about the usual method? Yeah. Now, something I do see quite a bit here is that, you know, the candidate will have their card or a student in a class will have the card maybe on the first day. And they'll they'll very slowly introduce what they're going to say. And a very common thing here is to say, I'm going to talk about a teacher who has impressed me. So they'll kind of read the card in the test. Uh -huh. 
um, and then kind of go through each point uh, as they continue going. So they kind of read, they, they look at the card, say the comment like, oh, who he is, he is this, right. how I met him, and they kind of read through it. Um, I do generally tell my, my students, if I'm teaching a class, to avoid doing that. Right. Um, the thing is that, and I know a lot of people tell people to do this, but there's one thing. One is when you read the card, yeah. it's flat. I am going to describe a teacher who impressed me. Like yeah. there's no energy to it. And secondly, I can't really give you a grade for that language because that's not your language. Okay. You're just reading it. So it, it can, you know, it can waste a lot of time and it doesn't really help the score. Gotcha. Yeah. How closely do they need to follow this? What happens if uh -huh. they go off topic and they talk about something that's not mentioned there? It doesn't really matter. You can go a little bit off topic. You could even really go a lot off topic. I don't recommend intentionally going yes. off topic. Right. Um, I would just say, you know, usually the first two points are very quick. Who is he? Two, three sentences. Right. How did you meet? Two, three sentences. Why you were impressed? The reason it's important to get to that is because that's the part of the question that will make you reflect. You're going to be thinking, oh, you know, he was really impressive because, you know, every day when I came to class, he was there waiting, you know, mm -hmm. before any students arrived. So you can see as soon as I reflect, my grammar, mm -hmm. my, the quality and the range of my grammar increased. Gotcha. And I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just having a good time. All right. So the dot points become a little bit more complex, don't they, as you work down? Yeah, they're going to force you to extend ideas more, which will then kind of force you to use better grammar. OK, terrific. Yeah. Good. Now, I'm not a fan of, excuse me, the usual method. I, I find it very difficult to speak for two minutes just on this task card like this and just going through those dot points and trying to expand who she is. You know, it's like there's only so much you can say about that before you run out of ideas. The main issue that I've seen with people doing part two in speaking is that they just exhaust the ideas, mm. right? They run out of language, they run out of ideas, and therefore they run out of language. And by about the minute mark, minute 15 seconds, there's just nothing left. And they start to okay. go around and say, and, and, oh, it's and, terrible. Yeah. Right. Let's think about another method yeah. then, because we need a different way to approach this. Okay. Here's another method that I encourage you to try in this live class when you're doing your speaking or if you're practicing by yourself. We call it PPF. It stands for past, present, and possibly future. Um, but basically what you do is you'll tell two or three stories. So you'll exhaust a story about probably the distant past. For me, talking about the teacher, I think about a primary school teacher when I was like eight years old, right? She was, she was a really lovely woman. And I can talk about her for about a minute, but then I'm going to run out of puff and I need some other ideas, right? So I'm going to switch the story slightly and say, well, more recently, another teacher that comes to mind is this guy here, he was fabulous because of these reasons. And I've kept on the topic of my favorite teacher, but I've just switched to a more recent. Maybe, maybe I have enough time to just throw in a future sentence or two and say, in the future, I'd love to be taught by Robert Sapolsky. He's my favorite scientist. Hmm. Something like that, right? And then, of course, I'm using some future language there, some modal verbs, some future tense. And so it's a nice little mix. The other thing you can do is tell one story but include information from the past, present and future. And I think we'll take a closer look at that. Mm. So just think about which method you want to try. And I encourage you to try the PPF method in this class. Let's see how it goes. Um, OK. Here are some possible topics. There are an array of different topics, but these seem to be the classic ones that come up in the IELTS speaking test. The categories are we'll talk about a person. Uh, like a teacher, for example, a place, talk about the countryside, a physical object, a book or a present or something that you've got, an abstract object like a <laughs> website, perhaps, a time. So these are the broad categories of topics that you might see in your part two. Let's take a closer look at the one that we are going to do in this live class. So you better pay attention because I might pick you to actually do it. So let's prepare together. All right, you get given this mark. What do you think? Um, 
what, what's my answer? No, like in your preparation, what would uh, you do? Like what first comes to mind? So yes, I would, the first thing that, that I would do is I would read over the entire question. And, you know, while I'm reading over all the little details, I'm probably still f focusing on that keyword, a website. Yeah. Yeah. So probably in my mind, as I'm reading, two or three ideas are coming in. I don't want to think much beyond that. Um, I would be careful, you know, obviously a website, a lot of people might think Facebook. Uh -huh. Now, that's fine. I might say, okay, well, what's my second one? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Like, I'll pick that one. You know, I might try to avoid one that's um, just too obvious. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I want to pick one and then I would write it down. That's a really important thing. You know, you get one minute to think, make notes. Definitely you want to make notes. Okay. Just for our interest, can you just type into the chat what website first comes to your mind here? A few people are saying E2 language and E2 school, oh, which that's is great. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> Tell you. Oh, good one. Yeah. Wikipedia, Pinterest, YouTube. Yeah. Coursera, Coursera, very nice. Amazon, yeah. eBay. Okay, Google, Udemy, PubMed. <laughs> We've got a doctor in the house. I think. BBC. Yeah, right. Oh, somebody said something rude. I won't mention that one. <laughs> Science Direct, Unacademy, which I think is a famous one in India. LinkedIn. All right, there are plenty of options coming to mind for people, which is H&M. <laughs> What's Love that, it. a shopping one? That's shopping, yeah. Okay, cool. Science Daily. Science Ooh. Daily. All right. Let me run through what comes to my mind with this task guide. I think Google Maps. I don't know why that came to my mind. And what I find having taken this test five times <laughs> with the pressure of test yeah. day is that the first thing comes to your mind is often the one that you just have to go with because my mind won't let me think of another website. I'm like Google, Google Maps, Google Maps. I can't, fine, I'll go with Google Maps. So I would run through this and in PPF, what I would do is talk about the past and how we actually didn't have Google Maps and what we used to use were these big directory books and we drive around in our cars trying to turn the page to find somewhere on the map. So I'm mentioning something about the website, but it's a past version. Then I would talk about how Google Maps has revolutionized the way that we get to places, et cetera, and talk about all the features and functionalities of Google Maps. And I might even slip in a little bit at the end if I've got 20 seconds or so and talk about what might come next for Google Maps and how I actually have no idea what the hell would come next for Google Maps. <laughs> well, I, th I think what you've done here is really good in terms of, you know, you think about what was it like in the past yeah. and what is it like now? Yeah. And what's really good there is to focus on, you know, how did it feel in the past? Oh. How does it feel now? And then, yeah, really describe the change. Like how is life now different? I think you'll find it's quite easy to just keep talking, you know, when you relax and you just say, yeah, like my life is, you know, life is very different now. I can't imagine mm. going back to, you know, using a map to find places. Great language. So. Yeah. So really focus on what's changed or, you know, what, how do you, how do you feel differently now? And you'll, you won't run out of things to say. Terrific. All right. While I'm selecting somebody, so if you want me to select you, um, just say me into the chat while I'm doing that. Uh, Here I come. Let's bring this up and let me see if I remember how to do this. I click on participants, I click on attendees, which we've now maxed out at 500. All right. All right. I'm going to go with, oh my God, there's lots of things popping on the screen. I'm going to go with Raman Garu. I hope you're ready, Raman. Does he have a minute to prepare? Nope. Nope. Oh, I think we've given Raman enough time. Okay. Here we go. Raman, you're on mute. Can you please say hello? Oh, hold on. You are on still on mute, Raman. I can ask to unmute. Let's see if that works. If not, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to pick someone else. Nope. Oh, talking permitted. No. Uh, How do I do this? Oh my God. Disable talk. All right, let's try someone else. Okay, Joby Joseph. Here we go. Let's try that again. Joby, can you hear us? Hello, Joby. You're on mute. <laughs> Select right. computer as All right. audio. Output. Let me try this. Um, audio output. It might be me. Hold on. 
select a speaker, MacBook Pro speakers. All right, I've got that. Let me try again. Select the speaker, select the microphone, Scarlett, speaker, MacBook Pro. Now I can see that Joby's also on mute. Right, I'm gonna to have to pick somebody else. Whoops. Just bear with us here. This is, uh, this is technology. All right, let's try someone else. Let's try someone right down volume, here. Maybe volume. Um, let me go to the chat. Let me see who's got the name up. All right, Navian, Navian. I saw Navian, the name Navian. Ready? Now I've got to find Navian. Wow. Let's find Navian. Search for Navian. There's Navian Fakor. Allowed to talk. Navian, can you hear us? Yes. There's Navian's face. Yes. Hello, yes, Navian. Sir. How are I'm you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Whereabouts are you? I'm from India. Which part of India? Uh, in the north part from Punjab. Wow. Okay. Mm. Nice. Hey, I heard things are all good in India. I heard there's some lots of coronavirus stuff, but we won't talk about that. All right. Navin, are you ready to do this for two minutes? Uh, I will try my best. Try your best. That's all you can do. And Mark and I will give you feedback. Okay. So we'll be listening carefully. Now you're going to listen to Navin on fluency and coherence. Mm -hmm. And what else? A little bit of pronunciation. You'll do pronunciation? All right, I'll do grammar and vocab. So away you go, Navin. Okay. Shall I start? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I use a lot of website in my daily routine, but the most useful best website that I found is Wikipedia. The reason is that in India, teachers give a lot of homework. And in India, there is a lot of road learning, cramming, rather than understanding concepts. So we have to just copy the answer from the internet and just paste in our assignments. There are a lot of people in India who are really fed up of this kind of education system. And the website I like is Wikipedia. I use it uh, just twice a week. And there is a lot of information given in the website and everything you search on, in, uh, on that website, it has a lot of information about it. And there are also the references given about the same topic that you are searching on the website. There are history facts related to that topic. Uh, everything is available. And it is just like a panacea for every Indian and also for the other parts, other, also for students living in the other part of the world. But for me, it is the best website. And I would definitely like to be a contributor in the upcoming years in the same website. Thank you. Navin, how do you feel you went? How was your performance? It was okay, not too good. I didn't give my best. What, why? What do you think you need to do? Uh, actually, right now I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's a big part of it. You know, I, I, just a just a little bit on this it, it is very nerve-wracking to actually have to speak for especially in front of 500 whatever people. you're doing now is quite <laughs> quite crazy i i completely sympathize with you but you'll probably shake on test day two and it's completely fine this is just the natural response that we go through when we get nervous so please don't let that um don't let that get to you too much and just accept the fact that you will shake you will sweat it's completely normal and just try to focus in on what you're communicating that's key Okay. okay, cool. Mark and I will give you a bit of feedback. So um, do you want to talk first about fluency and coherence? Yeah. Okay. So I guess the main thing I was just thinking is, you know, you're describing um, like the, generally it was quite good. You were able to talk for the full two minutes. Uh, you were giving some, you know, you, you provided a lot of background information, right? Uh, and you mentioned something that I thought was really good is you said there's a lot of rote learning in 
uh, India, and then you said, and we're really sick of it. So you actually added that emotional part to it. Nice. Um, and I mean, here's where you might say something like, you know, hopefully this may change in the future. So you might say like, you've said this kind of thing that's frustrating. You could then contrast it with something like, hopefully, you know, they'll stop doing this in the future. Or, I mean, in the opposite way, you might just say, I don't think they're going to change this, or this is never going to change. So, so really extending responses here and extending ideas. Yeah, getting like contrast or addition or yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and giving that kind of like, you know, that that opinion, and it could be positive, or it could be negative, both work. Um, the other thing might be to maybe consider I, I don't know, I don't know how old you are, but I remember there was no Wikipedia when I was in school. Uh, so, you know, I might say, you know, I remember when I was younger, you know, if I wanted to learn something, I had to go to the library and get a book, you know, I had to get the actual encyclopedia. Now it's just so much easier. Mm. Right. So again, that's another little trick is uh, think about how things were before. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, it was really good. So I'm not saying, you know, you have yeah, to be worried good. about that, but that's just a potential way to take it a bit further. All right. I might just touch on grammar and vocab briefly. First of all, grammar was really excellent. There were a couple of minor slips. I think first up was you said something like one of the website. It should have been websites. Just be careful with little plural nouns. Maybe it was Zoom that cut you off there. There was one little phrasal verb that you just missed. You said you were fed up of something. Mm -hmm. It's actually fed up with something. I was fed up with something. So okay. really nothing to mention grammatically. Um, grammar was really quite accurate. And I think it was quite varied as well. In terms of vocabulary, I'm just going to pick up really good things that you you did. You didn't you didn't bring in words that didn't make sense. You touched on panacea, which was actually relevant at the time. So that was a really uh, uncommon, infrequent word that you managed to slip in there and it was relevant. So that was great. But other words like references, topic, related to, nice phrases, contributor of. Rote so, learning. Rote learning. That was nice. Yeah. So yeah. Some, some really lovely uh, vocabulary there. And finally, pronunciation. Yeah, I'll just say uh, two things. It was, um, it was a good pace. I liked that. I would just say one little thing that you can, you know, you could start doing this today or tomorrow, practicing this, and just add a little bit of stress. And a, a nice easy way to do it is a few times you said they give us a lot of homework. There's a lot of people in India. And if you add some stress just to a word like lot, you know, there's a lot of people in India uh, who are sick of this. Right. They give us a lot of homework so you can almost add that emotion to it. Nice. So the word stress is kind of showing that you're unhappy about it. They give us so much homework that element of stress. It's nice and easy. Any word like, you know, they, they really give us too much homework mm. or there's really yeah, like really very. So these are nice, easy words that you can start adding just a little bit of uh, stress to. And that that communicates so much about how you're feeling. And it helps the examiner give you that higher score. Good stuff. All right. Very good. Um, <laughs> just bear with me again. Yeah, I have to work <laughs> out how this works. Thank you, Navin. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. No worries. I'm going to mute you there while I work out how to how to kick you out. Um, so attendees, more disabled talking. Beautiful. Got it. All right. Next one. Uh, we're going to do the same one again. And uh, Jessica, I hope you're on the line. I'm going to allow you to talk now, Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, can you hear me? Can yes. You hear yeah, pretty clearly. That sounds pretty good. Whereabouts are you, Jessica? Uh, pardon? Where are you? Which country? Uh, I'm from the Philippines. Uh -huh. Okay, nice. Great. All right. We'll probably just cut straight to the chase. Do you want to give this a crack? Uh, two minutes. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. I'm ready. All right. So, oh, hold on. I'm, I'm not ready. Let me get my timer 
There's a lot of stuff flashing on my screen. Let me try this. Aha, that's what I want. Okay, you can begin. Um, Google was first introduced to, to me by my professor when I was making my research peer paper a couple of years ago. Um, since then, I've been using it every day um, at work, at home, or even updating on news all over the globe. I prefer using it other um oh. oh Jessica, I don't think we can hear you. You there? It seems you're on mute. Hold on, let me see if I can unmute. Oh, maybe something's maybe an internet connection issue. Uh, all right, she got off to a good start. Uh, Let's. Uh, I mean, I, I got. While you there, do that, I'll find someone else. Is it, I, I will say this: uh, a nice little bit of falling intonation. So your intonation was controlled. Sometimes students go like this, and every sentence ends like this, and they go up. That was nicely controlled. One little recommendation while we figure this out. Um, I always love to start with or encourage people to start with the time first. So it wasn't wrong, but something to think about is to maybe start with a couple of years ago, my professor introduced me to Google. Yeah, I thought the introduction was a bit too straight in there. Yeah, it? it was a bit. Well, it, was, it took a bit of time. Right. It was a bit slow. And I, I really think just you want to get that first piece of information out quickly, like you're telling a story to a friend at the coffee shop. You know, that's a great way to think about this. Yeah. A couple yeah. of years ago, I started using Google. Great. All right. Yusuf, I hope you <laughs> haven't had too much luck today. Uh, and again, we haven't had too much luck because Yusuf, I can't click on his thing. Uh, there we go. go. Yusuf, are you there? Hello. Unmute yourself, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, fine. How are you, Yusuf? I'm great. That's good. Where are you? Uh, I study Poland, but I'm from Uzbekistan. Fantastic. Great to have you here. Okay. Do you want to try this, Yusuf? I'm going to give you two minutes, okay? Okay. See how you go. Yeah. You can begin. Well, well, there are lots of websites which I really like. However, what I like most one is Facebook. The reason because uh, not only you can uh, read news or stuff like that, but also uh, some entertainment stuff while you uh, in our hustle and bustle uh, lifestyle, we come across a lot of problems or stuff like that. We can uh, cheer up. I mean, uh, we can, uh, a little bit forget about some issues so how often you use it well uh, if i tell the honest uh, most of my time i spent uh, to use facebook um, uh, every two uh, every each oh i'm sorry that's okay no, keep going. Uh, whenever uh, i have free time when i uh, when I'm when my hands free, uh, I use uh, to join myself. Why you like it about? Uh, I like it because um, you know I'm studying far from my uh, home country in order to connect with my relatives, my spearmates. Uh, I try to uh, message with them and to see. Uh, what's going on uh, their life as well as they ask me uh, what's going on in my life so useful uh, there are many kind of useful stuff there but uh, as i mentioned before uh, it's quite useful for my uh, lifestyle thank you right. how did you go yourself i'm a little embarrassed i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> understandably understandably that's totally fine 
Uh, it's, it's, as I said before, it's quite a, a it's, it's difficult. It's fairly difficult doing this. All right, let's dissect your performance. No, not dissect. How did, what do you think? Hey, you should be very happy with that. That's a very good performance. You know, you, you came in, uh, you know, I get you're nervous, but, you know, I couldn't really tell. Um, one thing, you know, and, and, and J, uh, Jay mentioned, relax a little bit. Um, I could see that you sometimes stopped. And so there was a lot of pausing that was not as natural. That could be a bit uh, problematic, depending on the score you're trying to get. Mm. Maybe you're just nervous but just something to keep in mind. Um, and, you know, again, when it comes to fluency and extending ideas, you know, you mentioned here, uh, it gives me a chance to connect with my relatives. So here is where you can stop and say, you know, I haven't seen my relatives in a few months, or maybe I haven't seen them in a year, or, you know, when I was back home, Good one. Yeah. I saw them every week. Now I never see them. Yeah, there's or, a, sorry, there's a real tendency just to talk about the website's features and functions and stuff, but how a, do you feel? Yeah, you can certainly go off topic a little bit and just add in little additions it's called tangents, go off on little tangents, come back to the website, go off on a tangent, come back. I can't imagine not being able to see my family on uh, Facebook, Facebook, it was Facebook, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, you know, and again, if you're, if anyone out there is, you know, older like me, it's like, yeah, you know, I remember before when you said goodbye to someone, you literally said goodbye for the rest of your life. Now yeah. we're like this. So, I mean, you could just say, you know, it's, it's a big change to go uh, from seeing my family every week. And I'm so glad I've got social media or I've got Facebook because it helps me stay in touch with them. So how do you feel about it? And the other thing is to, Again, if you exhaust the ideas, you're really out of ideas on Facebook, just switch to another website, talk about LinkedIn. Recently, I've started using LinkedIn, which is similar to Facebook, but it's more for business, blah, 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 blah. So feel free to switch the topic if you want, not the topic, switch, you know, a website, fine. You're allowed to talk about another website. It doesn't have to be on the one website. Nice little phrase that anyone can kind of put into these things. You say, it helps me. Right. So it helps me stay in touch with people or yes. I see my family more often and it helps me, you know, stay sane while I'm away from home. Something like that. Yeah. Thank cool. All right. Grammar, grammar and vocab. You've got quite good vocabulary skills. Grammar, you're going to need some work. There are a few phrases in there that were quite unnatural. I won't pick out too many, but I like I like most one. Uh, the one I like the most. That's complicated mm -hmm. grammar, but these sorts of phrases seem to trouble you a uh, little forget about. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what you were trying to say there, but definitely you will need to brush up on your grammar there. And some phrases came out beautifully. Uh, what's going on in my life? You said that perfectly well. Some other phrases were incorrect grammatically. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I mentioned, vocab was, was quite strong. Some good words, entertainment, cheer up. Even phrases like going on is good. And finally, pronunciation. Yeah, and that, that phrase you just said, what's going on, it was a what's in going on life. in my life. Yeah. That was beautifully linked. Yeah. So it was, it's not what's going on in, it was what's going on in my life. And uh, when you do that, you are at your best. There were other times where you stop more and so there was more pausing, mm. which is, not great for your pronunciation score. So you're kind of 50 50. So just keep, keep, keep improving that and, and you can do well. Uh, word stress was generally like, it was also kind of like sometimes good, sometimes not. So you said it's a website I really like. Uh, there's many websites I really like, but the one I like most, that was good. And then a little bit later, sometimes it was a bit flat, most of the time, you know. So uh, yeah, good. Keep keep making small improvements, and you're going to do really well. Good stuff. Thank All you very right. much. No problem, Yusuf. Thank you so much. Thank yourself. you. That was very good. All righty. Let me try again. While I'm finding somebody, yeah. it's quite intense trying to click. Yep. 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 <laughs> Can you just talk about something yep. interesting? All right. <laughs> I've said it twice. My big thing I love to help with students is just that quick, fast time intro. That's what I said to Jessica a couple of years ago. I used Google for the first time. Every day, 
I use Facebook to stay in touch with my family. Beautiful. You know, right. you're good. You're good. I got time intro. Just start telling the story right away. Okay, Franchette, I hope you're out there. Hello, Franchette. Oh, we got a photo. Hello, Franchette. She's muted. No. Ask Hello. Him. Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh, I forgot that we haven't prepared you for the next one. <laughs> Can we just do the same question. Let's do websites yeah, okay. again. We'll have to do Let's website see. again. I think you're ready for website. Maybe we can uh, have we'll, a look at the other. We'll one. do that next time. All right. Let yeah. me just restart the timer. Okay. All right. And friendship, you can begin. Okay. Should should I begin? Yes, please. please. Okay. So. Um, usually, I have um, different applications in my in my phone, but the the website that I most liked is Facebook, wherein I can connect to to some people um, around the globe. Uh, I can connect to my families uh, away from the Philippines, and um, I usually use it every day. Like I can, I use it for uh, five times a week, uh, five times a day, and then um i like about it i like I, I i like facebook so much because um they tend to connect people from other places and um uh these this application helped me to communicate with my family around the globe and also um facebook also helps i help me to have uh to have and gain more knowledge because uh there are some there are some pages in facebook that uh, they provide some educational services or educational attainment entertainment for me as a student um it is very useful and it is very um applicable in my situation and and can facebook you, also wait, 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 wait. Can you now switch and talk about another website just so you don't exhaust Facebook too much? Is that okay? Uh, okay. Make the switch. Okay. So. Um, I don't know which one though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Google. Okay. Talk about Google for just. Okay. 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 I have. A, okay. I have different applications here in my phone, but what I like the most is YouTube because in YouTube you can you can view, you can see many videos such as educational videos, which can help you in improving your knowledge and your um, just sometimes skills because they tend to provide you, provide you with videos with different um, procedures and how you, you will do such things. Good, and thank you. If <laughs> and again, if that happens on test day, that's not a bad thing. Okay. Great. So the reason why I stopped you there is because I, I I just felt like you were beginning to exhaust Facebook there, and there was beginning the and and uh, and syndrome. Train. Yeah. 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 Uh, I see. When you find yourself just running out of ideas, did you feel like you're running out of ideas there? Yeah, sometimes a little, a little bit. <laughs> Good. Then just switch to another website. One of the things that I would do. On test day in my preparation time on my note in the one minute prep time you really can't write down much at all it's not long i would write down maybe a couple of different websites or three websites just in case i do exhaust my talk about google maps i would also maybe write youtube as well something like that okay feedback feedback yeah uh, just a quick question um so you use facebook like five times a day yes do you ever feel that's like too much? Not not yet. <laughs> For me, it's not that too much because I'm into social media, so I tend to to check always my social media accounts. Mm. What about like, do you have any friends or family who maybe say, you know, you are on Facebook too much? You know, they do they do. Do you have friends who don't like it? Yeah, I have some friends that they don't like Facebook. They usually, I, they they tend to view their Facebook account only for just once a day or maybe four times a week. Yeah, because but, mm, no, continue. 
because they have this perception that if they will spend their time in Facebook, they will be using too much time instead of using it to another or any other activities. Good. So the, the only reason I ask that is, you know, you, you might come in there and say, you know, some of my friends, you know, they they try to use it only once a day because they don't want to get, you know, sucked in. They don't want to get pulled in. Uh, they want to enjoy, you know, they want to they want to focus on what they're doing. But I use it and this is why. So it's a nice, uh, thing, yeah, a nice little fluency trick. Cause you know, if, if I'm taught, you know, when I heard that, I'm like, oh my gosh, five times a day, but that's me. And so I imagine maybe some of your friends have that. So it, what I mean is it's a nice way to extend is to compare other people's ideas, but then mm -hmm. say, but I use it for this reason. So uh, uh, okay. just a nice, yeah, just a nice way to extend the idea. And I noticed here when we did, you were you started using you know more mm. like because and my, my friends tend to and so the the language became a lot richer when you stopped mm -mm. adding information and started kind of extending ideas okay just a little thought i hope no, that it's, was it's, it's it's good because it you know i think what people the problem people will face here is they're just trying to talk about Facebook, but again, addiction to Facebook or friends who use Facebook, what life was like before Facebook, what will be post world Facebook. I saw this documentary on Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, whatever. Yeah. So how do you relate to Facebook? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So uh, grammar, very good. A few slips. Actually, I don't even know if this is a slip. You said different apps in my phone. Here in Australia, we'd say on my phone. But again, prepositions sometimes differ from place to place. Mm. It might be called what they call a slip, which means it doesn't really matter at all. I think you said families, my families instead of family, something like that. So really <laughs> nothing to contribute there for grammar. It was very <laughs> um, vocab. Yeah, you have a, a good grasp of vocabulary. You use some very relevant words, educational, applicable features, even the five times a day. Now, I have a question for you, Mark. Mm. Um, Franchette restarted a few sentences. She said, I use the app five times a week. I mean, five times a day. Is, would she be penalized for that? No, absolutely not. If you if you make a little slip and you correct it, that's fine. Gotcha. I, I would even mm. say it's, it's a good thing for, for fluency. Um, you know, even if you're in the middle of the sentence and I'm saying, yeah, you know, uh, oh, let's see, I try not to check Facebook. I mean, I try not to check Instagram at all. So I catch myself, I go back and fix it. And, and there's a little tip there, right? Like I said, I try not to find, I try not to check Facebook. I try not to check Instagram five times. Sentence stress. Sentence stress to show that I know that I've made a mistake and I'm correcting it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Anything on prawn? Probably a bit, not really, this isn't prawn, but perhaps a little bit too quick in places, sped up too much. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it could have been a, I mean, I, I wasn't really noticing that so much. Um, I did notice there was a bit, it was uh, the, the rising intonation at the lot of, at the end of some sentences in the beginning. I'm from the Philippines, okay. I check Facebook, and it's not wrong. But if it happens a lot, uh, the examiner is going to have a hard time giving you a higher pronunciation score because you need range. So if okay. you say, yeah, if you say I try, if it's me, I say I try to check Facebook once a day. So stress and falling intonation. I'm from mm -hmm. okay. I'm from Manila in the Philippines. Stress okay. and fall. Stress and fall. Fall. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Francia. Thank you, sir. <laughs> See you soon. Have a nice day. You too. Bye -bye. Very good. Uh, okay. I noticed Next. that we haven't got much time left. This okay. Is, this is a lot of fun, though. Yeah. Um, by the way, if you're enjoying this and you want to attend again, you're going to have to click the subscribe button. But better yet, if you really want to make sure that you can attend all of our live classes, you can check out e2language.com. We actually run live classes for IELTS twice or three times a day, I think seven days a week, maybe six. Anyway, there's a lot of live classes going for reading, writing, speaking, listening, even grammar and pronunciation and spelling, believe it or not. We yeah, have a spelling I saw class that. now. Yeah. So yeah, lots to check out at e2language.com. Is there anything else I need to show in the slides?
I think that's a, a good idea. You know, everyone, it's really fun to give feedback, but it's really, as a teacher, it's even more fun to know that, you know, my students are going to go and practice that. And, uh, you know, when I talk about things like sentence stress, that has to be internalized. Yeah. You know, like when you go to the test, you don't want to be thinking about sentence stress. It should be automatic. So make sure whatever you learned here today, you know, practice, uh, you know, maybe get some feedback from a from a teacher that you trust. Mm. Right. It's really important. Yeah, good. Guy. I yeah. agree. There's a lot there. We, we saw what's in the scoring and there's a lot on the fluency and coherence and vocabulary and grammar and pronunciation. And within each of those, there's like dot, dot, dot. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, one little thing that we have at e2language.com, which is very helpful if you're taking an IELTS test or an IELTS test is coming up, or even if you're just thinking about it, is the mock test. And the reason why it's really good is it gives you a simulation of what it's like to take the IELTS test. And you actually take a one-on-one -on -one speaking mock test with an examiner, oh, sorry, with one of our examiners who probably was an ex-examiner. And then what they do is they provide you with feedback. So they actually mark this, fill out this report card and you get a score for all of those things for pronunciation and fluency and coherence, et cetera. And you can see what your weaknesses are and then you know what to focus in on and think about and practice before test day. Anyway, this will help you uh, boost your chances of success. But I think, Mark, well, got five let's, minutes. Just, let's just do a few questions. If you have any questions, pop them into the chat. Let's see what we've got. Close that. Everyone's just saying me, 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 me. me. Yeah. I'm sorry we couldn't we're, select we've run, everybody. Yeah, we, we can't. Uh, we'd love to. I hope I hope these really did did help. Okay, let's do all this stuff. Okay. Okay, so Arbanesh has a question about uh, Arbanesh actually got some feedback from me to language. We gave Arbanesh a seven. Does this mean that Arbanesh will get a seven on test day? We do our best to give an equivalent IELTS score, and I think we give a very, very accurate or similar one. The thing that you have to understand about IELTS, though, is that things can change on test day. Could be better, could be worse, who knows? So um, indicative scores are helpful. They give you a range. But again, focusing on the feedback that we've got that we gave you, not so much the score. If we've told you something about grammar or we told you something about structure, focus on that, not the seven. And that will help you to boost your score. Um, Okay. I know your catchphrase. Um, Gonna wanna. Okay, great question. Do you want to talk about contractions? Uh, in the speaking? In speaking. It's fine. What's a contraction? <laughs> like, instead of saying, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about. Um, or I want to talk about this. I want to? Um, yeah, want yeah. to. Um, I'm not really sure that they're... I, I don't know that there's a reason to use them generally. Um, if you do say that I'm going to talk about, which is fine either are fine it, i i wouldn't worry about that too much yeah i i think when you're with your friends it's very easy to contract words and say hey what you're going to do this weekend but in the ielts test you want to you can still do that that's fine but try to speak clearly as clearly as possible and you say what i'm going to do this weekend is and sort of actually i would speak a little bit differently in an ielts test than i oh, would say to my friends yeah. I would, it's fine either way but um I guess I'm just key. Yeah. If if you if it comes out in the test, don't worry. But try not. Yeah, try to be a bit more professional. Good one. Um, okay, someone asked about stammering. So there's sort of two answers to this one. Some people have a speech impediment where they might stutter. If you have a speech impediment, like a genuine one that you've perhaps had for a long time, you can get, um, I wouldn't say help or an exemption from IDP or British Council. But if you let them know in advance of your test, they will set up a test room that will be different for you. And they'll actually um, allow you more time in the speaking. And they won't actually, your stutter or stammering won't, it be, won't affect your score. If you're stammering just like me just then because you're hesitating because you can't find the vocabulary or your grammar's a little bit off, that's when you will be penalized. So it's not something that's uh, you know, a disability or anything like that, but you're actually just can't find the language. So there's a couple of differences. Um, <laughs> okay, I think we're just about out of time, but um, again, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe, come across to e2language.com, sign up for the live classes, 
I think that's all. That was fun, yeah? Yeah, that was great, you guys. And congratulate Leo, to yeah. everyone who tried. That was amazing. Yeah. I wish we could get to everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right.